What's going on, everybody? Had some people, I know a couple of people, I believe, posted comments to some of the YouTube videos about the Com C, me setting it up, and then I had a couple emails, text messages, stuff like that. A lot of people are curious. I'm guessing this is what I had for curiosity for a long time until I sat down. Well, I shouldn't say sat down. I talked to somebody I know on the phone for a while that ran a lot down for me. I believe he's like. I know he's in the top 20 for sellers on here, but he lives down the road from me. He was able to explain a lot to me, give me some side assistance, which was definitely well appreciated. But I'm going to go through some stuff here. And this is my, e or my eBay, Ooh, my Com C. I know there's some people that are really upset that eBay bought, I don't know if it was a percentage of Com C or what onto it, but it was. I believe it came across on Twitter like two days ago. So somehow eBay, I don't want to say owns Com C because it's probably going to be completely wrong, but I believe they invest in or part owners now or something with it, which I see different comments. Some people are happy about it, but majority very upset that I've seen because they don't want all the craziness to go on. It goes on with eBay on Com C, which is understandable, but the same time frame. You gotta remember everything at Com C within seven business days will get listed over onto eBay. Plus, you can do auctions and all that other stuff, right? So it's already being used onto eBay, onto it. But I think where it's gonna be where a lot of people are seeing is like they don't want to have eBay really playing a part with the commissions, uh, fees, stuff like that onto it. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Com C is still Com C. Uh, hopefully it doesn't go bad because of somebody buying out somebody again with their vision. I know some people are upset because it takes forever to ship on Com C a week to three weeks, etc., etc. They're hoping that gets fixed. But for everything else, I've been really happy with my original, I should say my experience these past. It'll be three weeks Monday I set this up. I believe it's three weeks. Uh, yeah, I think it's three weeks Monday. Just thinking off the top of my head here. It might be going on four, but I think it's three. But when I've looked at this, I will say I was kind of shocked with the sales. Now, none of my packages, which I'm going to flip screen here, you guys, so be patient. Those are all my packages. You can see 300, 400, 224, 60 cards. Very much a week part, except for these first two I did pretty quickly. And I was looking at the batch numbers, right? They got... Roughly, when I look at this, somewhere in a ballpark, I'm trying to think what that is, around 5,000 packages just between the two days I did this. That's a lot of packages. And then if you look five days later, they got this package from me, and you're talking, is that, oh, 10,000, 14, roughly 13 to 14,000 in here. So they do get a lot of packages in for people if that's how their batches are working. I was always told not pay attention to this progress because it doesn't mean nothing. Um, as you can see, it has percentages, but I have nothing that have actually been listed yet. So we'll see how that goes from that point on. But everything I've sold has all been from here, Upper Deck EPAC. Now, I used to do Upper Deck EPAC a long time ago. Uh, and I still get it occasionally because this product I just can't get a hold of, and I'll buy maybe a box or a few packs on there, take stabs at, and I used to have it always shipped to me uh, with all the hits, just let the base sit there. So I took probably close to, I'm going to guess around 175 cards and put on to Com C. So the thing is, when you buy from Upper Deck EPAC, you can transfer it to your Com C account free of charge. Those cards I mailed in cost me fifty cents each time for them to do, you know, scanning and all the other stuff with it. Where versus Upper Deck EPAC, it's free, so I don't have to worry about profit margins much with Upper Deck EPAC. You know, I can stick every card on there and check. You know, all the base cards do them at like a nickel pop, two cents, four cents, whatever they are. You know. And believe it or not, they do sell. So we're going to go over some of this stuff because I know there was a lot of questions like, you know, interesting to see what sells on there. I'm going to show you. Now, this is all hockey. Everything I've always done with Upper Deck EPAC was hockey, just so everybody knows. There might have been some Upper Deck football back in the day, but it was 
where I believe, I know it was Najee Harris's rookie year, and I only bought a couple packs of that stuff. But if you look here, this just sold today. Uh, and it shows you who purchased it, okay? But, oh wait, it's not by acquisition date. Let me see if I can change this. I thought it was. Bear with me. Let me see what happens here when I click that. Okay. Play one more time. That way you guys can see. So, here's uh, basically... This one, well, it doesn't even have the new card on there from today yet. Okay. There should be one for 12. Well, I guess that gets updated later tonight in my history. But as you can see, 71 cents I got for a Flare Ultra Pop ca Culture. Um, Pastmac, or Pasternak, uh, card. 90, I sold for 99 cents, a Fleer Ultra Fabulous 50s Gretzky. I got 94 cents, which is in my account. You guys can kind of see the transaction fees on to it there and everything, which I like. You get to see it. I got credit. Now, if I wanted to catch it, I could. Just off of my sales the last three weeks, just having only hockey and a lot of base stuff. I've sold like $50 worth of stuff that I normally wouldn't sell. So it's kind of cool to see it do this. I'm just going to scroll through like an 18 cent Mario Lemieux card, 19 cents for another Mario Lemieux card, 7 cents. Look at this. These here, upper deck canvases were all bought by the same person. 7 cents, 3 cents, 10 cents, 5 cents. While it doesn't sound like a whole lot of money, this stuff was just sitting in my in my upper deck e packs. So I sent it over. All these canvases, I'll buy, well, except for one person. Uh, right here, but all the other guy he bought every single one four nine four four four. He might be building a set, so kind of cool when you look at that stuff. Some of my older young guns sold two forty nine fifty fifty forty two the whole way down two oh five two twenty five forty thirty dollar card three dollar card dollar fifty some dollar ninety nine. It's like a nine dollar ninety cent sale. I mean, I was in shock by this stuff, but as you can see. It's pretty frequent. I mean, look, all 11, 13. I don't understand this cart thing. I know somebody's probably going to ask. I have no idea. I think that means they bought from multiple people. If one of you guys on there know it more into it, put in the comments so other people can learn. I'll put it to the top. I believe cart means they bought from multiple people. And so it was all into their cart on here because I thought it was eBay. But I'll show you somewhere on here. It'll show you eBay. Oh, it must have been at the top. There was something on here that says eBay. But that's the bottom of everything onto it. So as you can see, a lot of this cheap stuff does sell. Would I have spent 50 cents to send this card in and sell it for 25 cents? No, but it was sitting in an upper deck e-pack. I figured, what the heck, let's throw it all on there get some inventory going. And basically sold $50 in stuff that mostly I didn't have at all in my possession. It was sitting in, you know, some distant land, virtual land out there. I'm trying to find one that says eBay. I know I saw one on here at eBay. Oh, right here. Here they are. These both sold off of eBay. So as you can see, I do post them on eBay. And probably within a week, these were about right. They were probably up there within that seven-day time frame. Boom. Popped right off the bat. So you get a lot of different options onto this. We'll continue this adventure for probably all year just so you guys can see. I'll be as transparent as I can on a lot of this. Uh, might be, I don't know, because there might be something I can't show, so that's why I said I'll try to be 100% transparent onto it. But a lot of stuff is sold on this. So when I've sent in $3 and fifty cards, I've had sitting around $0.50 cents a pop that I probably couldn't get rid of elsewhere. These probably would have went into a $0.50 cent box, to be honest. And by doing it this way, I made was at basically $0.92 cents more. So kind of cool when you look at that. There's a big profit difference. That's already with the Com C transaction fee coming out. If I wanted to cash out, it'd be another ten cents or ten percent off. So like this dollar fifty eight, I lost like another uh, fifteen sixteen cents on. But pretty cool overall. I wanted to show you guys this. Now I was just want to make sure the fair warning is like this stuff here. I would not have normally sent in a lot of stuff like that. I've been sending in. I think I can show you guys here. This is the stuff. Let me switch it over to a view. So this is going to be 79 cards I'm getting ready to send out for next week just to keep the batches going each week. And this is the kind of stuff I'm sending in, but I looked it up to see, hey, if I send this in for 50 cents, 
am I going to be able to make money off of it? Is it like going to be like a dollar that I could put on the car and make, you know, 40 cents off it? And most of it was. Oh, I should say all of it was. Some of the stuff I have a little bit smaller profit range where it might be like 27 or 28 cents, but I'm taking a stab at it. So some Jordan stuff, Shaq, old inserts. More Jordan stuff. This Peyton Manning's actually kind of cool. I think it was around seven or eight dollar card. And you have to send them in with this. Well, you have to send them with sleeves in, but you don't want to do top loaders because they charge you to take them out of top loaders, even a golf cart. Um, that rookie, I think that's uh, Garnett rookie, Lords of Diamonds, or Derry Carr rookies. You know, stuff would take these here were surprised what these sold for. They were all like seven to fifteen dollars. So, even a little Kenny Pickett we're going to send in there and stuff, just to have it out there. I mean, I have some a little bit bigger stuff in, like Kevin, or Evan, Evan, I'm right, Kevin, or Brandon Ingram. I kept on thinking of football guy, Brandon Ingram with the E, but it's, or, yeah, Ingram with the E for the Jags, I kept thinking, sorry. Was looking at something else earlier on to hear with draft picks, but, um, with Brandon Ingram Auto, I mean, it's probably like a $15, $20 card. I'm going to set it this way just to see what happens on to it. Uh, there's other options where you could pay a dollar, but I would only do the dollar if it was like $20 and up, but I wasn't in the card for very much to where I could hurry up and get it listed. But I think otherwise they're just all going to go in 50 cents. All right, let me flip this back around. All right, so... Overall, like I said, my experience so far has been pretty positive. A lot of stuff was off on Upper Deck E-Pack. Uh, we'll see when the stuff starts floating in that I've mailed in, how that goes and everything. But overall, I'm very, very happy with, you know, stuff that was just sitting in my E-Pack stuff and pushing it over. But other than that, guys, if you guys got some questions on to that I might be able to answer or research, go ahead and put them down in the comments. Maybe we'll, I'll do it with a follow-up video once we start seeing the cards, uh, being able to mail in, be coming up and being listed, and how all that works. Larnette, appreciate everybody. Take care. Have a good one. I'm out.